here, Alyssa. And I'm Ranger Scott, and welcome to week four of our Shenandoah National Park Fall 2020 video series. Again, we're with you every Thursday right here on our Facebook and YouTube at 2 p.m. Right, and we bring you special topics, tips for traveling to the park, and if you have any questions, this is an excellent time to ask them because we will be answering those. We're also going to give you a peak check, and if you are interested in knowing what the park looks like throughout our 100 mile long Skyline Drive, check out our pictures on our website and our social media pages. Also, share what you're seeing in the park too. If you wanna uh, share some of your pictures, make sure you include a date and location. We've got this amazing chronologue right here at Pass Mountain that you can come up and take some framed photos. It's a really cool thing to get kind of a time lapse of visitor photos. We've also had our amazing park photographers out in the park capturing some of the beauty that's already coming this fall. And moving right along, we are going to go right into our peak check. And as you can see behind us, Neighbor Mountain is finally showing those colors, those oranges and yellows that are really apparent, especially on the park. And you're going to be seeing those just all throughout, even on short hikes and overlooks. It's just kind of everywhere. It's so exciting and you can see it on neighboring mountains when you are at those overlooks. And then my personal favorite, if you're seeing any red, is the Virginia Creeper, which is climbing on the chunks of trees. You can see it lining Skyline Drive on our rock walls. And it's so vibrant and red, especially when the, when the sun hits it just right. Definitely, and the sun is definitely out and that's really good for these leaves still. Temperatures are down as you can see. Definitely check the weather before you come into the park to make sure that it's not raining or anything. But it looks like we're gonna have a really nice, beautiful weekend. And that's gonna bring in a lot of people into the park. We're gonna talk about crowds later on. Um, but just make sure that you check the weather. If there is rain and there's some of those leaves on the ground, you wanna make sure that you don't drive or you're careful when you're driving over that because those can actually get really slippery. That's something people might not think about. Right, that's true for the trails too if you are hiking to watch out for those slick leaves. And then really we are seeing so much color this week in comparison to last week and I think that's going to continue through October mm -hmm. and into November. So, I mean, peak? It's, 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 it's nearing, it's here. It's, it's, it's looking nearing. really nice yeah. for sure. <laughs> It'll just be here. And if you have any plans to come up and visit, you're going to see some color for sure. Yeah, definitely. So we are going to hand it over to Ranger Jim, and he is going to talk about climate change and phenology. Cool. Let's check it out. Hi, folks. My name is Jim Shabrell. I'm the Chief of Natural and Cultural Resources here at Shenandoah National Park. I wanted to talk a little bit today about uh, two topics. One is phenology, kind of the study of science with regard to timing of nature and then uh, some topics on climate change. So first, phenology, timing. Timing is everything, right? So timing is about understanding what animals, what plants, how they coexist and when they work together. All these organisms have evolved over a long time, working together, understanding how to cooperate, how to pollinate, how to interact, how to breed, those kind of things. And all that is about timing. Sometimes it's weather, sometimes it's daylight. Today, a little bit to talk about um, the fall colors is the phenology of uh, how leaves change. So the colors change in part because of how the leaves, where they're attached to the branches, start fading away a little bit. And the green color in the leaves start fading away and show the other colors that are there. Sometimes those colors are bright red, sometimes they're brown. It varies quite a bit depending on the species. We have a lot of oaks in the park. And so oak trees will, will give up different colors of reds and browns, whereas other species will give bright yellows. And that is about, the timing of that is about um, weather. Weather is the biggest driver other than day length. So as the days get shorter, the leaves start changing. That's a normal thing. But what changes is when the weather patterns before fall or even as far as back as summertime influence the trees and how well they're functioning if they're stressed. And so the timing of that is all about when the trees start getting the cues to start closing off those, those leaves and change the colors that you see in the fall. So I think we're on deck this year for a pretty good um, fall color season. And my guess, this is just my opinion, is that it'll be a little bit later 
than normal based on the rainfall that we've had this summer and into fall. So we had a dry early summer and then a wet later summer. So I think that's gonna push it off a little bit. But that's just my guess, right? So other than guessing, science is about understanding. So I wanted to talk a little bit today about climate change and how climate not only affects trees and phenology, but all the different species in the park. So um, we have a lot of information with regard to some species in the park, whereas we don't have a lot on others. But it's key because national parks are very special, right? National parks are the places where we go. We want to understand, we want to learn, we want to experience. And these places are preserved for current and future generations. And so we really need to understand that as stewards of the park, we need to understand what that future looks like, right? And so we need to look at it from a lot of different things, a lot of different angles, to include how sustainable populations are, how things change over time. Are those changes natural or are they human caused? And so all of those things are what we look at from a long-term monitoring standpoint. And I wanted to talk about a couple species in particular. If you've heard of the Shenandoah salamander, that species we have a project underway and we're trying to understand the salamander's uh, life cycle. We're trying to understand how climate change may affect that salamander. And current information tells us that the populations are declining and we're concerned about that. And it's largely connected with climate change. And so we're trying to understand what's the future of the Shenandoah salamander, a species that only exists within Shenandoah National Park. What's the future for that species? And Another species of concern is the brook trout. Brook trout are living in our park streams and of course cold water is a key factor. And we know that the temperature in park streams for the last several decades is going up. It's not going up rapidly, a little bit at a time, but it's warming. And of course with a species that is thermally regulated as a threshold, that's important to the brook trout, its survival, its reproduction, all of those things. So we're thinking about the brook trout in the long term, which streams it may survive in, which streams it may no longer survive in because they warm up. A big part of it is how groundwater influences that stream. So if there's sufficient groundwater, springs, seeps, that moderates the temperature and keeping the, the water cold, even though the air temperature might be rising a little bit. So there's a couple species of, of concern that we've been looking at for the last few years. There's a number of others, including high elevation plant communities, that we're looking at for the long term. We have concerns about some species and their long-term fate in Shenandoah National Park. But of course, nature, among all things we understand, is that it changes. It can change rapidly, sometimes more rapidly than what is normal or what species are used to from an evolutionary tactic and then sometimes it, it happens at a normal pace and so that's what we're trying to understand because there's a lot of stressors out there. If you're an animal in the forest and you have invasive bugs, let's say um, hemlock woolly adelgid for example which kills hemlock trees and you have invasive plants and you have climate change and you have these different factors that go on, that together are these stressors that we're worried about in the long term for certain species in the park. What you can do is, of course, do your best to reduce the consumption of fossil fuels, to save energy both at home and in your vehicle. These are important things to do in the long term for everybody, for society. We can make a difference. You know, it's not all the time that we get to hear about some of the science behind the preservation that goes into the park, so it's great to hear from some of our scientists here in the park. So thank you so much, Ranger Jim. So as we were talking about before, we've got a lot of people coming in to see the beauty of Shenandoah National Park. So if you want to avoid some of the crowds, and you definitely do, believe me, make sure one tip is to go into the southern entrance stations. Those are uh, Rockfish Gap, Swift Run. Those will get you into the park much faster. Right, so we really want to emphasize not going into Front Royal. There was a two hour wait That's this crazy. past weekend, right? So we really, really, really um, urge you to use the southern entrance stations. 
Yeah, and another thing that you want to do is get your pass online before you come. You can get any pass, whether it's your day pass, annual pass, Shenandoah National Park pass. You can get all of those at recreation.gov. And then when you're coming into the park, you can skip some of the long lines for people that are paying and go right into the pass holders lane and come in much quicker. Right. One other thing you can do is do what I did, and that's come during the week. I actually climbed uh, Old Rag this last week, and it was absolutely amazing. I did it during the week. I got there early, and there were very few crowds. And so we definitely want to make sure that you're not coming into Old Rag parking lots and White Oak Canyon parking lots on the weekend, because those are going to be full. Right, and we do have more than 500 miles of trails in the park. So if your plan A uh, hike is kind of crowded, just move on to your plan B. There's tons of trails in the park. And we actually have a new recommendation list on our website. It's called Recommended Hikes that are not crowded. And so we really think that that's a great place to start if you guys are thinking about the hikes that you wanna do. Yeah, absolutely. Another thing when you're driving around the park, if you see wildlife, you know, we obviously know you want to stop really quick and just yeah. slam on your brakes <laughs> in the middle of the road and take pictures. Obviously, that's not a good idea. If you're ever parking along the road, make sure that you have all four tires off of the road completely and safely before you stop your vehicle. Great. And then also, if you're bringing your pet to the park, make sure that it's on a leash and that you pick up after your pet if it happens to Oh, Use the bathroom. Uh, gosh, yes. <laughs> yeah, if, yeah clean up after your pets. Yeah. Make sure that you take the poo bags <laughs> away, put them in a trash can, and uh, we'll keep the park clean. <laughs> right. I'll go there. Right. And then along the same lines, we really think that it would be a great idea to bring your own trash bag. It's such a small thing for you to do, but it makes a huge impact when you can take your own trash home. Yeah, absolutely. And when you're hiking, um, another tip, by the way, to avoid crowds, you can take fire roads. So those are um, a little bit wider trails, so if there's a lot of people there, you have the ability to spread out on those plants. Um, and as you were talking about before, check out that Shenandoah, um, the nps.gov slash shen slash plan your visit slash no crowds, yep. I think is the exact URL. You'll be able to find it easily on the website. And like we said, definitely want to avoid crowds this, this weekend especially. Right. So once again, guys, if you have any questions, please put those in the comments and we will get back to you. And then we are going to close it up now. Yeah. And next week you can join us again and we are going to be talking to Ranger Roth and he's going to be discussing bears. How exciting. Yeah. We'll see you then. Bye. I think we handled that You okay. did well.